Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat, our WWE show. My name is George Coles, this is my tag team partner, Buddy Roberts. Terrible. He's just, he's running out, folks. Gary Rhodes, everybody. Buddy Roberts. Anyways, today, before we start our regular show, I want to announce that today is the seventh anniversary of the Los Eddie Guerrero. One of the true best performers ever to lace on a pair of boots. I mean, would you agree? Yeah. Definitely a, a sad loss, a guy that's gone way too soon. Um, one of the one of the highlights of the 90s and early 2000s, in my opinion. Oh, he was one of the best because he could uh, blend in with whatever kind of style. And he he could do a lucha style, he could do a fast paced style, he could do Japanese style, American style, Japanese strong, you know, whatever. He could do, do Gundam it. style? No, no. <laughs> anyway, rest in peace, Eddie. Um, we do some tributes, but Chavo stole all of them. Exactly. Now, going into the WWE Raw show, um, the first thing in the ma first match of the night was Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler. A pretty decent match until, and then uh, Del Rio and Kofi Kingston joined in and were after the match. And then something happened. I wonder what that was. I came down to the ring, player. It's me, Teddy Long. <laughs> and I announced. A tag team match. And they ain't going one on one with an Undertaker. They're going two on two in a tag team match. Player. I don't care. <laughs> I love it. So it turned into a match with <laughs> Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston versus eight, Alberto Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler. A decent match. Yeah. Um, the match aggravated me because I knew I would have to hear him do his, his Teddy Long, which is really Cleveland Brown. Hey, Peter. <laughs> well, he looks like Peter Griffin. Anyways, after the match, Vicky Guerrero was down in the ring with Ziggler. And they're still beating this AJ Cena dead horse. Yep. Yeah. Which, the one, the one good thing about the whole situation, and you pointed out, was Ziggler was on TV for the first 25 minutes of the show. Gave Ziggler tons of expo exposure um, the AJ John Cena angle, it's like somebody watched TNA and went, this Claire Lynch thing's a good idea if they have better actors. Here, Vincent Kennedy McMahon watched it and says, well, if they're going to do this crap, I'll do it, and I'll do it better. Well, I think. Let's take the Teddy. Really? Oh. At least I'm doing good one of them right. <laughs> no, that's, it's better than that. That was probably the worst McMahon I've ever heard. Was that more like a Kermit McMahon? I don't know what it was. Um, but anyways, terrible. but that's what I think. It's Vince's ego trying to say, if you if you pieces of shit can't handle it, I'll show you how to do it. Sorry, Vince. You, you picked your worst actors to do it. Speaking of people having TV time, um, the Big Show fought a, a returning William Regal, which he was on SmackDown this week after being attacked by Big Show in a pub. And I'm glad that they're using Regal on TV again, finally. I'm not so happy that he's being used as just an enhancement talent, basically. Well, I, I you're right there, but I, I do like Regal. I, if I have to see him on TV in any form, at least it's better than nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember we were actually talking about on one of our other shows the match he, he had with Punk, where I mean, you know I think we were talking when we did the Punk's DVD review. Yeah. Um, I mean the guy is one of the best in the ring. He makes everybody look better. Yeah. And he's a well-respected member of the roster. He helps all the kids that are there get better. And that's that's all you can ask for somebody is to be, be great in the ring and help everybody else get better. The guy, someone that should have been a world champion many times over and never got there. Yeah. But the next two, the next two um, were actually fighting for a Women's Divas Championship spot. Layla versus Caitlyn. It's your standard Divas match. I, I really liked... You know, Michael Cole said everything there is to say about the Divas division now that Beth Phoenix is gone. He had to explain who Layla was and who Caitlyn is. Caitlyn's in this color, Layla's in this color. If you have to do that on the show with your two people fighting for the number one contender, your division's not going well. It, it's not, and I'm not dissing any women. We're not dissing women wrestling. I love women wrestling when it's good. Beth Phoenix is awesome. Yeah, her awesome, Nat Natty, awesome Kong, com, or Kong, Karma, Karma Kong, Chameleon. whatever you want to call her, 
Awesome Kong is one of my favorite wrestlers. I know a couple of these shows I've worn her shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, man or woman, I think she's great. Well, she can beat a uh, man or a woman. I mean, she she is phenomenal. Sarah so, Del Rey is tremendous. Yeah, well, you, I mean, as bad as the, the woman is a train wreck right now, China. Yeah. She was a very big part of the, the woman coming into wrestling and yeah. actually being part of the main show. And right now, it just seems like... It's crap. It's it was better when Finley crap. was there. If Finley yeah. was in charge of the Divas division, I, I think it would be a lot better. It's total fucking bullshit. And... The next thing we're going to talk about is something that a lot of people think is bullshit, but he, us here at Heel Heat, we thought it was a great angle. Um, Jerry the King Lawler came back. He was doing his thing, thanking the fans for coming back, when all of a sudden Cult of Personality hits, and here comes Paul Heyman and CM Punk. I loved it. It was probably, you, you asked George, ear-to-ear -ear grin. And uh, a lot of people have bashed this segment, and Saying lot, he went too far. It went too far. A lot of people said, why do you do it? He did it because he's a heel. And he's the best heel there is right now. I mean, I, honestly, I can't think of a, a, a top heel over this guy. And see, what you people are not, not realizing, and a lot of people, I understand a lot of you haven't seen it, but go back and watch some of the Memphis tapes. This is same, some of the same exact shit Jerry Waller did himself. And not only did most likely Punk cleared it with Waller, but... Also, he did, um, last year, or the year before, when uh, Jerry Lawler's mother died, six days later they were making fun of him on TV. Mm -hmm. So Lawler obviously is okay. He rolls with the punches. Well, Lawler's business. He's all business. Yeah. He's not like a lot of guys that take things personal and, mm -hmm. and that, that are in that business. And if, if it's going to help a guy out, Lawler's all for it. You know, that's one thing. That we've You know, we've talked bad about Lawler in the past about certain aspects of... His, Not the man himself. Commentary. It was commentary was lagging. Maybe that this rejuvenation that he's going through. We're gonna check it out and see how it goes. But um, CM Punk, I think, hit a home run, hit it out of the park. I, one of the best heel promos I've seen in a long, long time. And I want to tell you what I told George right before he even started talking. I was like, Paul Heyman probably loves this because this is the only time he. I mean, this is the only guy he has to come to the ring with and not say a word. But he did fake the heart attack. He did fake the heart attack. That was, was just a, kind of like a receipt, right? That was a little bit in bad taste. But, yeah, if you guys watch the, the um, what's it called, the Legends what, Round Table that WWE does, there's the opening of the show shows a part where Jim Ross asked Jerry Lawler if he broke his jaw on purpose, and Lawler says yes. The question was talking about Paul Heyman. A bunch of years back in Memphis, Jerry Lawler did break Paul Heyman's jaw on purpose. So, a tit for tat. I'm not really a big fan of the heart, the fake heart attack. It reminded me a lot of the Fritz von Erich fake heart attack. But still, overall, it was a great thing. Brought out Mick Foley. Heyman did it better. Yeah. <laughs> Mick Foley and CM Punk together, they're realizing that these guys are gold together, and they're putting them together as much as they can. Well, I love the part when Foley comes out and Punk goes, Geez, the guy just had a freaking heart attack. I saved his life. <laughs> and honestly, if you read uh, some of the stuff that Punk's tweeted today, yeah. it's hilarious. He's calling everybody pigs. He says, I'm a lifesaver. He goes, John Cena is the doctor of thugonomics. I'm a doctor. I saved a man's life last night. <laughs> That's funny stuff. It really is. It is. You know, they're rolling and, with the punches, man. And I'm sorry if this loses us viewers, but we enjoyed it. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed it as well just realize that it's just an angle it's a wrestling angle it's nothing cm punk is saying about jerry lawler it's personal it's all psychological and yeah. it's for the fans it's not for them just two guys i mean i guarantee you in the back punk has nothing but the utmost respect for lawler a lot of the guys do a lot you don't really see a lot of people talk bad about lawler unless they work for him for memphis and they still no i mean except for paul in the, in the jaw but paul probably deserved it but then coming off of that, we had a little bit of a letdown. So much so that I don't even really remember much of the match. We had it set up with some really good workers in there. Tyson Kidd, Jason, Justin Gabriel, Rey Mysterio, and Sin Cara were the primetime players and the clones. It was a spot fest to me. Yeah. I watched it and, you know, it, it just was, like... It, but it was a letdown. Coming off, they, they brought you all the way up to that. There were, where I was like, wow, this is... And, and I think we talked about it yesterday... It's like the beginning of the of a new attitude era or a new That's revolution because right. they seem to be pushing that word revolution a lot. Well, what I what me we were talking about yesterday was, I think that this is all. Linda's done running for office, and I said I, I told George you can't just run right into an attitude era. It has to slowly yep. start, and I think that the Waller thing is taking the place of the pipe bomb that we're building 
into a new attitude era or whatever they want. What did you say they call it? They've been using that word revolution. They do it to hype the video game. They've used it a few other times. That could be it. I th honestly think that that this new 2013, uh, WWE t uh, 13, um, is just to see how many people are actually going to get behind a new Attitude Era. Yeah. I hope it goes, man. I really do, because I'm getting yeah. bored with a lot of the, the kid shit. Then we had another good segment. Uh, it was a segment backstage. Ziggler and The Miz talking about Miz quitting Team, Funk, Team Punk at the time, which ended up being Team Ziggler. Ziggler tried to get Miz to join his team. He told him no. Then Miz bumped into Foley, who said that we're going to vote on who's on my team later. And Miz said, well, I want to be in the vote. Ended up getting the win. Miz took it, what was it, 60% of the vote? Oh, yeah. So I don't know if it was fixed or not, but that's who we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry about this because normally we, we have our questions of the week. We, we put them out there and we have an answer, but since the WWE answered for us, it'd be unfair for us to say our answer now. We're still going to read what you guys sent us. Um, a lot of you guys were actually right. Shit. Yeah, about ninety percent of it was. Right? But here's here's what we got for some of you guys. Um, our answer, I was going to go with the Miz, honestly, because if you watch our back a few shows, we've been talking about a Miz face turn, and I thought this was the way to do it, especially with him being on the poster. But here's what you guys thought. The first one's from our friend Carlo D'Angelo. I think the fifth man on the team on T Foley will be Brutus Clay. Another solid pick. Um, Joshua Adams, ten forty four. Miz is the fifth man. Paul from over at the Deli says, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Paul. Happy 27th birthday. Uh, we're taping this on your birthday, so whenever you watch it, just know we recorded it on your birthday. Paul put over here, have to agree with the Miz face turn. I think it would be the best thing for his career right now. So I'm guessing that means he wants Miz. Mask Tweeter, who's a guy I'm going to make another video about a little bit later. I have a silly feeling Ric Flair or the Miz will take the final spot. Never meant to fade. I think it's possible they'll make the make a Miz and maybe give us a Miz face turn. Choppy 84. I mean, the, with the last member of Team Foley being up in the air, I'd love to see a returning wrestler take the spot. Maybe actually have Foley take the fifth spot because he looks like he's dropped some weight in the last couple months. I'd also like to see Mark Henry as the fifth guy. That would be awesome. And I, I agree. I think Mark Hen I I've been telling him I've been waiting for Mark Henry to come back for a while now. He's right cleared to go. Lou from over at the Deadly Sins put, I would like to see Zack Ryder or Brodus Clay as the fifth member of Team Foley. With that, I think that really fits into Foley's gimmick, the Zack Ryder and Brodus Clay guys. A lot of you guys hit the nail right on the head with the Miz. I was going to go with it. I don't know what you were going to go with. Miz. Because but, my plan was, and I'll, I'll, let me explain what I thought was going to happen was, because the Miz and uh, Kofi have been working their little angle. I figure with the Miz turning face, it'll finally turn Kofi heel. There you go. You know, but I was hoping it'd be like a, a you know, a, a stone cold, yeah, stone cold switch, thing. yeah. But if we do it like this, maybe he could screw the Kofi could screw the team over or something like that. I mean, I don't want to ruin it, but I, that's what I think. I think Kofi needs to be healed. And and going off of that, our question of the week for the for the next week is: Do you think CM Punk and Paul Heyman went too far? Let us know what you think about it. Put it in our comments. Put it on our Facebook. You know, on Twitter. Hit us up down where. Down with there. Right down there in the comments. Oh. And Abe Knuckleball Schwartz strikes out again. But anyway, just let us know what you think. Did CM Punk and Paul Heyman go too far? And the next thing of the night was uh, R Truth versus Tensai with Antonio Cesaro on commentary. Terrible match. They're using Tensai as enhancement talent. Obviously, whatever money they spent on him has either been wasted, they don't know how to push him properly, or. From what I understand, the Giant Bernard character, which I haven't seen a lot of Japanese wrestling recently, um, he's not playing the Giant Bernard character, which is what's getting him over in Japan. Uh, I, I see right now as Tensai, Albert, or a train, whatever you want to call him, needs to step out of this character <coughs> now before he dies, this character. Um, have him lose to a guy, maybe like a few loss of truth, and after that just snap. Say I'm better than this shit, you know. Cut a promo the next week on it, you know. Do something. Get the guy some time. Like gold dust day when he burned the gold dust attire. Exactly. It's time for him to burn this suit, but hopefully have something else on. <laughs> but other well, than that, he, all he has to do is not shave his chest for a week and his hair cover. I know, everything. right? At least, you know, that's the good thing about this this, this tensai character is he's, you know have a whole bunch of hair all over him. 
Uh, and speaking of squash matches, the next match was a uh, Brad Maddox versus Ryback. You know, I'm really disappointed because Maddox has a decent look to him, and from what I understand, he's a he's a decent enough worker. You had a chance to build up another kid to be a main another main wrestler player. I'm not saying he had to take a clean clean win over Ryback or even a win over Ryback, but either being competitive or a cheap win would have been better than him getting squashed. It, this is probably, I mean, and I, I've been kind of iffy with Ryback, but this was probably the, one of the lowest points of the night. This is probably. And we don't usually say it worst match of night, but I have to say it was because I'm, I was expecting so much more, especially before the match. Heyman was wanting to talk to Maddox, and yeah. they bring the ambulance out. The only good part about the whole match is the king goes, "Is that my ride or something yeah. like that?" You know, so you know Jerry's good with it. But uh, I was expecting when he opened that up because you're talking about Mark Henry. I figured when he opened the ambulance up, Mark Henry's gonna come out and attack him, or somebody. Anybody. You know, I was looking for something, and I, it was just a straight up letdown. Yeah, but. Yeah, it was. And speaking of some a somewhat enhancement match, Sheamus versus David Otunga. Again, they've seemed to just drop David Otunga's push or, or semi-push that he was getting, and now he's gone back to being a guy that's getting beat up by the likes of, she- likes of Sheamus. Well, you know, and well, the thing is, I think they put Otunga with Sheamus enough to get squashed by him is because Otunga knows how to work with Sheamus. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's like this. So I think he's being punished for as good as he is. You know, it's like you take Vin, or uh, you think Brooklyn Brawler. He's good. He's not terrible. I mean, he wasn't the worst member of Nexus. Okay, who was the worst member? I'd say out of everybody, probably Tarver. Okay, but that's why he's gone. Well, and that's it. But I, I say it's like this: you're you're good enough to be a great jobber. Look at the Brooklyn Brawler. I mean, when he was Doink, he was winning matches and everything like that. But when he was the Brawler, he had to lose. And I think uh, until Otunga gets out of this funk. Or Sheamus starts working better, so they can put him with other people. I think he's gonna be jobbing to Sheamus for a while. Cause that was like their fifth match in what two months, fifth television match of that. You know, you're, you gotta spread it out a little bit. Then we had um, the tag team match: the Road Scholars versus Kane. And this was a big reveal. I'm sorry, I blew it earlier. Um, of who was gonna be the new member of Team Foley. The fans voted on Miz. It was Kane and Miz. They had the segment beforehand with Brian and Kane talking in the I back. Got- we, we don't have to do this if, if you don't want. <laughs> I wouldn't choose. If he asked me to be with him someone else, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> and in the whole match, he had Brian doing his thing on the outside. I think Daniel Bryan is absolutely the best wrestler in the world, period, hands down. When and Bryan came out after you know the Miz was announced and everything like that, the biggest pop of the night, bigger than Cena, bigger than CM Punk, bigger than anybody, was Daniel Bryan, man. I'm telling you, the guy is golden. Yeah, and and if they're not seeing the dollar signs behind them right now, they they really need to get their head checked because you're throwing away millions and millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. <laughs> I seemed like a hillbilly, didn't I? When I was, you little, know, a little bit. Yeah, whatever. I did a little bit of it. Uh, yeah, like just, Pennsylvania yeah. hillbilly. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to make you look like a retard. You already do enough of that on our show. But it was a decent match. More so for the interaction with Daniel Bryan and Miz and Kane on the outside and after the match than anything that happened really in the match. Well, it's kind of like this. The big reveal was Miz being the the, the, the new member, but Bryan just overshadowed it by being there. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I, I kind of I would have liked the new Miz. I, I think, like I was telling you last night when, or when we was watching it, that I think this is the first time Miz has been faced since he very first showed when up. When he was the host of SmackDown. Exactly. And everybody hated his guts. Yeah. So, and I, I think he, he went through a rock phase where he was so um, hated hated for being such a good guy. He turns heel. I, 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 I see something more. Right. And speaking of a heel, the, our heel of the week, we haven't, oh. we haven't done in a while. Oh, yeah. CM, CM Punk. CM Punk <laughs> versus John Cena was the main event. A decent match, not by far not their best match no. that they've had. Um, Ryback comes out. Chases Punk back to the ring. He loses to loses clean to Cena, which makes me think that Punk will get over on the pay per view. He lost clean to both of them the last two weeks. So, and then after the match, Cena and Ryback have a tug of war over the belt. <laughs> oh, Cena looks like a monkey in the face. I'm sorry. I let I let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> but anyways, when they're doing a tug of war in Punk's face, it's my belt. <laughs> Dude, that was priceless, man. It was priceless. The dude is golden too, man. Yeah, I mean, 
He really is, and and it's they they really got as soon as the Cena era is over, and he goes down to mid card or wherever, or just as an attraction. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are going to be your flagship to this show. Like I said, in that order, I think like I said, it'll be CM Punk and Daniels. Daniel I don't know, or, or Daniel Bryan, but I don't know which one is going to be the top one still. I say it's Daniel Bryan. He's he's great. He's tremendous. CM Punk is the best heel they got. I think Daniel Bryan's the best baby face, face they could get. And I, I, I see Ziggler and Miz, a lot of them are going to be in the mix. Cesaro. And Cesaro, of course. Alberto Del Rio. And, uh... The scholars, both the road scholars. Yeah. I th- those are the guys you're gonna watch out for. Overall, I thought it was a really good show, highlighted by the big, the big Lawler return. Some decent matches on there. What did you think about it? I said right now, man, it was the best one I've seen in months. There you go. It was a really good show. I liked it a lot. A good go home show for the pay per view. But basically, that's all I got to say. You got anything else you need? That's to it. My name is George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes, and this has been Heel Heat, our WWE show.